Hey there folks, today I'm going to show you how to create a horror DVD cover in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, when we finish up you'll have something that looks a little bit like this and along the way you'll have learned some stuff about layer masks, the gradient tool, adjustment layers, blending modes, advanced brush settings and all manner of Photoshop goodness. Uh, before we go any further I'd just like to remind um, you that this tutorial is rated in for noob which means if you're already pretty late at f using Photoshop then you're probably going to get a little bit frustrated with this and uh, you need to look someplace else. If you're just finding your feet however, like many of my students are, you'll find that there are heaps of hints and tricks to help you achieve some pretty terrific effects. To start off with, I'm going to encourage people to get out there and do a little bit of research. Uh, get online and start checking out some horror DVD covers. There are a couple of reasons why you should do this. First, you'll get a feel for the type of color, layout, and techniques commonly used by designers. And once you understand the conventions of horror DVDs, you're more likely to create something that's original or a little bit different. Incidentally, my favorite horror movie poster of all time is for John Carpenter's The Thing. If you've ever seen The Mist, you may, noticed, may have noticed that at the beginning of the film, uh, that poster has a little bit of a cameo. Um, and shortly thereafter, the main character bemoans the fact that movie studios are always slapping together posters at the last minute in Photoshop. And, yes, that's precisely what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so let's have a look at um, the type of design conventions that are commonly used on DVD covers. Uh, to start off with, um, there's probably going to be some sort of photo montage on the front, uh, usually featuring a big floating head. Uh, the title is going to appear um, usually on the front and on the spine. There's going to be ratings advice uh, and uh, region information and that sort of thing. Um, there'll also be a tagline um, somewhere, it's usually on the front, but uh, when it comes to this particular design, I've chucked it on the back. There's also going to be um, still images uh, from the film. The first build cast and crew always get an appearance on the back cover. It's that really skinny writing, and I'm going to be showing you how you can do that. Uh, there's going to be some sort of blurb assuring you that this is going to be an action-packed thriller that will have you on the edge of your seat. Um, and because this is a horror DVD, um, we're going to chuck a uh, really grungy looking montage on the back as well. To start off with, uh, we're going to launch Photoshop and create a new document. Um, now, when we're creating this document, um, we're going to use some very, very specific uh, measurements. I'm going to set the uh, width of this document to 272 millimeters the height to 181 and I'm going to make sure that the resolution is 300 dpi um, if you're working on a computer that chugs a little bit you might like to drop that down to uh, 150 I'm going to leave everything as it is and start up this new document now when you're working in Photoshop one of the really cool things you can do is uh, use non-printing guides um, to set up different regions of your work uh, we're going to do that today uh, with uh, the spine of the DVD cover so we can distinguish the, the back, the spine and the front from each other. Now if you can't see uh, the rulers in your document uh, go up to the view menu and make sure that rulers are checked uh, because using these rulers uh, dragging from the rulers like this you can create these uh, non-printing guides to move them around you'll need to grab the move tool and when you hover over them like this you'll notice that um, you can move them about on the page. I'm going to set a uh, ruler guide at 130 millimeters, and I'm going to press Z to grab the zoom tool and just zoom in a little closer um, on this region to make sure that um, the ruler is in exactly the right place. There we go. Um, and I'm also going to set another one just by holding down my mouse on uh, the ruler over to the left here and dragging it over. I'm going to set this at uh, 143 millimeters and I'm going to go down to the um, the view size here and change it to, sorry, not 100 percent. We'll change it. We'll try 25. Uh, there you go. Uh, you can see we've set up the uh, the back of the DVD cover here, the spine and the front cover. Now there's a couple of other things that we're going to need to do um, if we're going to uh, really do this easily and successfully. And the first thing we're going to do is create um, a couple of groups. And these are like files to organize your layers. 
Um, and if you can't see your layers palette, if it's not up on the screen, you can always go to the Windows menu um, and drop down to layers to make sure that it's showing. Um, now I'm going to call the first group here um, front and spine. And I'm going to double click on the second name here and rename this to back. Uh, so all of the uh, layers for the, the front and the back will be organized into these different groups. Now the advantage of doing this is that if we select uh, front and spine, I can create what's called a layer mask. Now this is really cool and I'll show you how this works in just a moment. I'm going to go to the layer menu, drop down to layer mask and at this stage I'm going to hide all. Now what you'll notice has happened over here in the uh, layers palette is that um, this group and everything in this group is now masked out, it's now hidden. Now, of course, there's nothing actually um, in these folders, so we can't see that anything's been hi hidden, but stay here with me. Um, I'm going to go over here and grab the rectangular marquee tool. Uh, the, key the shortcut for grabbing that is M on your keyboard, and you'll find that using these shortcuts makes it a lot easier to work um, in Photoshop. Now, I'm going to select um, the, the front and the spine of my DVD cover, making sure that I have the layer mask selected. Now, what you'll notice is when I drew that object, uh, sorry, when I selected that area, uh, it snapped automatically to the guides that I'd set up. Um, if that's not turned on, you can go to the view menu and drop down to snap, and it makes it a lot easier to work. Now, with my layer mask um, selected over here in the layers palette, and with the front cover and the spine selected, I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. Now what's happened here is that um, I'm telling Photoshop that I want everything that is on the front and the spine to be visible, but everything that's on the back to be masked out. Now I'll show you how this works just by creating um, a simple text box over here. I'm going to just create um, an object here. I'll crank up the um, font size a little bit and I'd better actually change the color to black hey um, I've created some text here and I'm going to drop it into the uh, front and spine folder what you'll notice is as I move this um, layer around on the canvas um, as I go to move it outside um, the mask it um, is no longer visible and that way we can keep uh, the front and the spine and the back um, sort of separate entities um, on our, in our document. I'm just going to drag this layer down to the trash and delete it. Now we're going to do a very very similar thing um, to the back cover. I'm going to select that layer group, go to layer, layer mask, hide all. Once again I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool by pressing the M key and this time I'm going to select the back of my DVD cover. Now making sure I have the layer mask selected, I'm going to hit delete once again. And what I've done now is, um, once again, objects that are in the um, layer group called back uh, can only appear in this space on the canvas. Um, and that's going to make it um, really quite easy to keep um, the front cover and the back cover separate as we're working.